Hi guys, it's Kai and welcome back to my channel. So this video is going to be a makeup tutorial on how I got this sort of, I call it monochromatic, glossy, wet look. Uh, ever since I did my room tour video, I got so many requests um, asking me how I did my hair and makeup in that video. But the hair video is going to be coming soon. I did just change up some of the colors of the makeup from blue to red just to make it more interesting. But the overall techniques are pretty much the exact same. And I haven't done a makeup tutorial in so long, so I kind of miss it. So if you want to see how I did this face, then just keep on watching. It feels like it's been so long since I've sat down and done a makeup tutorial, so here we are and we're gonna start from the very beginning. I'm not gonna glue down my eyebrows for this look. Um, very rare for me because I tend to really like that dramatic transformation, but um, we just wanna be really fish today. Also, I dyed my hair this weekend. Let me know if you like it. If you don't, please keep your comments to yourself because I can't go back. <laughs> Would you guys believe this entire year I have been cutting and coloring my own hair, like literally with a handheld mirror, like two mirrors, like trying to cut the back. That's how I've been living for the past year. You guys are probably like, yeah, we can tell. <laughs> I like it and I know it's like not gonna be as perfect as it would be if I went to a professional, but like I save so much money. Plus I'm like quite picky and I, it's always hard for me to really articulate what I want because I'm just like such a pushover customer service bitch that like, I feel like I just have more control when I do it myself and I just take more pride in it. Anyway, let's get started with this tutorial. So I'm just freshly shaven and you know, I've reached a point in my life where I have to start covering my like five o'clock shadow. Even though my beard is, I swear, the subtlest beard on earth, I still have to cover it because um, sometimes I see in pictures a little bit of grayness just pops through and it's not cute. So I just use this color from the Makeup Forever Flash palette, like that little peach shade. I'll take a little flat, dense brush from Real Techniques. You could like use a sponge or your finger. And I just stipple that over where I see that grayness from my facial hair. Might have went a little bit overboard with that, but it's okay. So basically, so basically you need to set this so that it doesn't mix in with your liquid or cream foundation. So you need to have a, a layer of powder in between this and your foundation. This is some Cody Airspun powder. I think it's mixed with a bit of Ben Nye banana powder as well. There's like nothing left. Um, and just a powder puff and I'll cover all of that. So then let's go in with foundation. I use the MAC Full Coverage. I mix the NC35 and the NC45. Just stipple the product. Don't really swipe it in because you don't need it to be blending with the um, color correction. So once I've done like a full pass with a 45 color, I'll go in with a 35 just in the center of my face. Like you'll see the difference that it makes. See? Okay. So there's no product on the sponge. I'm just stippling over my face to blend any sort of lines and wrinkles. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD stick. You just want to get a foundation that's like way too dark for you and you want to apply it just to like this area, this area, and that area is where I'll put it. And then I blend it out with my same foundation brush. So recently I've been trying out a lot of different methods of contouring my nose. Um, it's a very delicate art form. So I used to do a cream contour and then a powder contour on my nose and it just started to be like a little bit too much and too dark. So I'll show you what I do now. I am taking this Makeup Forever concealer and you can see this is the shade of it. Very light. I'm taking a little tiny lip brush and you wanna start off right about there. If I start off my highlight any lower than this, it just makes my nose look like extremely long. So I'll just start it about there. And then you just wanna bring it up in a straight line. But I sort of, instead of just drawing the line up, I sort of, um, draw it in a way like it's a very, very thin triangle. Meaning I make this middle and then the top part a little bit wider, like that, if you can tell. It basically just starts wide and then goes to a, a thin point like that. So it's like a triangle. You just basically have to start off with so many different shapes if you're still learning and still figuring out your face. Um, try doing a straight line, try doing a fat line, try doing a very, very thin line. Um, you just have to see what works for you. And this has been what's 
been working for me lately. So I will actually set it like this even though it looks a little bit extreme. So I'm gonna take that more Cody Airspun on a powder puff and I'm just gonna blend or I'm gonna set everything. My entire face. And then dusting it off with a large brush. And then where the nose contour looked a little bit more extreme before, now you can tell it looks a little bit more subtle. So now I'm going to take this NYX matte bronzer, and you want to find a matte bronzer. You could also just find a foundation powder that's just darker than you. I like to apply it with this little eyeshadow brush that has a flat edge that's just perfect for nose contouring. And you just go down in the two straight lines like this. If I was going on stage, I'd probably do it a little bit more extreme than this, but for this look, I'm just gonna keep it that simple. So I am gonna take that product now and then contour just around the rest of the perimeter of my face with a larger contouring brush. Let's do our eyebrows now. So I feel like I'm pretty lucky to have nice eyebrows. They used to be so hairy back in the day and then I just discovered tweezers. Um, and I'm just gonna fill them in with the Anastasia Dip Brow, which is so old, my god. And then just an angled flat brush. This is the MAC 266. And I kind of just fill them in where I see sparseness. Like I really just concentrate the product here on the outer part. And then I like to kind of draw a tail and extend it downwards a little bit because my real brows are not as long as I'd like them to be. So right, this entire area is just um, makeup. In the center, I don't really need to fill this in as much because I already like how it's sort of faded and sparse there. But here, I like to fill that in. Okay, so now we can move on to the eye makeup and we're gonna do that glossy, monochromatic look. So I'm gonna use this red eyeshadow from Sugar Pill. Um, I'm actually not gonna use like a red cream. You could use a cream eyeshadow, you could try using like a lipstick, something like that, but um, if you have a strong, pigmented enough eyeshadow, then eyeshadow really should be sufficient. You wanna start off with a flat, or not a flat, a fat, fluffy blending brush that looks like this, one that is um, not very dense and will just move around a lot. I'm like getting product on my hand. You want to start off just by concentrating that color around the eye socket in this sort of windshield wiper motion. That's how we're going to deposit the color. And then once you've deposited the color, blend it out with circular motions like that. I'll just demonstrate again since we're going to be layering this color. I deposit it with these windshield wiper motions or like rainbow motions first and then circles. And then once you think that it looks nice and blended, you can put the product on the lid. So I'm going to use a flatter brush that looks like this and I'm just going to pack that color on the belly of the brush and then just swipe it all over the lid. And then once you get it on the lid, then you can take a little bit more red and then blend it into the eye socket. So those two steps blend together. See, if you put the red on the lid first and then blended it out, you're sort of at the mercy of the red and then you're just blending as much as you can. But then before you know it, you get to the brow. And once you blend all the way up to the brow, um, I just think it doesn't look as polished. You always wanna make sure that there's this blank space where you see that skin in between the eyebrow and the eyeshadow. Otherwise, everything is just clumped together. There's no spacing and it just looks bad to me. So I, that's why I like to do the eye socket step first and then I'll put the, I'll then I'll press the eyeshadow below that so that it's just easier and I have more control. Eyeshadow is a story all about control and I've got lots of it. So now I've got the red on the lid. Um, now what? Let's put some red on the lower lash line underneath there. So I'm gonna switch to an angled brush. I'm actually probably gonna use the same brush that we use on the brows. I'll just clean it off. Okay, but I'm not gonna go that far inwards. I'm probably taking it like just halfway. If I was doing this on someone else, I would get them to look up 
as I was doing their lower lash line. But obviously you have to look in the mirror. So my tip is to sort of have your mirror um, down there so that you're, you can tilt your head up and look down into your mirror. That's also how I do my top eyeshadow too, so I can have my eyes open but still see most of my lid space like that. You know, I'm not doing my eyeshadow like this. You have to look down into your mirror. Or you can also stretch down the eye like that and get at it that way. Everybody on YouTube used to say, I hope people don't still say this, you, you can't stretch out the skin around your eye. You use your ring finger, it applies the least pressure. Like, it is really not that serious, girl. Just stretch out the skin if that's what you need to do. To blend it down there, um, you don't want to be using your huge fat blending brush that looks like this. If you blend that down there, you kind of just lose control of the color and it gets everywhere. So you have to use a smaller blending brush that looks like this sort of size. This is a 217 from MAC. And you can apply it naked, like without any color, or you can have a little bit of color on it. It's totally up to you. And I'm just going to diffuse down there. So that's pretty much the finished eyeshadow look. It was literally just one color. And the way that I get that glossy finish is I use this product that I got from NYX. It's called their Lid La Care. Um, but I reckon you can just use clear lip gloss. Like this feels basically just like clear lip gloss, except it's like marketed to be used on the eyes. I'm gonna apply it with a brush because I just like, again, to have more control. So I'm like looking for a clean eyeshadow brush. This will have to do. And I'm just gonna put it on the top, okay? I'm not gonna put it down there. I, I'm just gonna stipple it on, and you can see the effect that it has on making the eyes look like glossy and wet. Now the trick with this is you can't just apply it all over here because then you would see that harsh line, like this perfect soft gradient would cease to be soft. It would just be harsh because it would turn from dry to wet. So you only need to apply it on the inner part of the eye like that and that's sufficient like that's enough to give it that glossy effect you know you don't need to apply it everywhere so just be very sparing with this and like that's it so now the final thing I'm gonna do for the eyes is just apply some eyeliner I'm just gonna do a very subtle wing okay I'm really loving this eyeshadow look so let's move on to the skin. Now, we want this look to be like wet and dewy and natural, which are sort of all the opposite things to what drag makeup is. Like, we have matte full coverage foundation on and we've set everything with powder, so our skin is totally matte. So we have to sort of fake the look of shine and dewiness. So I'm gonna use this cream highlighter from Krylon. It's um, their Illusion in the color Velvet. I'm just gonna put it right on the top of my cheekbones. And as you can see, it's not this like glittery highlight. And I love glittery highlights, but for this, we just want a sort of glowing from within look. So I'm gonna blend that out with a sponge. So there's how that looks. After I apply this, I'm gonna go over it with some powder to enhance it. And then this is a powder from Ofra. It's their Evergrow highlighter. It's like a trio. Um, I like to sort of more dip into these darker shades. Apply it a little bit perpendicular to that so it touches my brow bone. And like I'll put a little bit on my forehead but some people really like to overdo it and I just can't get with that lifestyle. What I can do is put a little bit of highlight on the inner corner so I'll take a small brush. I would use my fingers if I didn't have nails but I'm gonna take a little highlighter and just put that right in the center there. Sometimes when we use powder highlights they can look a little powdery and I find that if I use a setting spray it just sort of blends everything together so it just looks more like it's a wet highlight on the top of your cheeks and not this shimmery powder that you put on there. This is the NYX matte finish setting spray. They have a dewy formula too. I honestly don't really think there's that much of a difference. I've tried both of them so I'm just using the matte one. For the lips I'm feeling red so this is a liquid matte lipstick from Huda Beauty. Okay, and then finally, I'll just cover that up with a little bit of clear lip gloss that I'm just gonna apply with a brush. 
Okay guys, uh, we're pretty much done. I'm just gonna put in my contacts and these are circle lenses and then my eyelashes. These are a little bit shorter than what I normally wear but I've just cut up some pieces from a couple different lash brands and put them together. All right guys, this is the final look. Let me go put on my wig and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the finished look everyone. Um, the hair tutorial is going to be coming soon to my channel, so make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you can see when that comes out. I love the way it turned out. I feel like the only TLC member right now. I'll give you the red light special. If you guys end up recreating this look, I'd love to see how it turns out, so be sure to tag me on Instagram. I love seeing what you guys do with my videos. Let me know if you want more makeup tutorials on this channel, or if you have another idea, you can let me know down in the comments. But until my next video, I hope you guys are all doing well, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!